let's see how this stream of consciousness video goes. I'm holding my pendulum so that I can ask it questions. And um, so my, we only have one computer. It's in the kitchen. So I get to hear my, um, what my son chooses to watch video wise. And uh, I guess there's this person, Lily Singh. She's beautiful and she just got a show. The show is getting hacked at uh, by all different places. Um, so it's this, from what I can see, it looks like she made a big deal out of getting um, diverse set of writers and um, all of her jokes seem to be against men, white men, whatever. Uh, then I saw a snip where she, she a clip, I guess, where <laughs> this stuff's so funny to me. You know, I know I'm going to trigger or tweak somebody, but I saw this clip that somebody uh, was showing. So there's this, I think he's an Indian guy. He's hilarious. So my son's watching this guy's video, this guy's YouTube channel. And he's just tearing Lily Singh apart. <laughs> and um and in one of the one of the clips, um she she's introduced by it looked like a, a black woman with straight soft hair and Lily Singh said um about the woman who introduces her that she stole her cousin's hair or something like I guess she's Indian and and then <laughs> Lily Singh's wearing cornrows at the time that she says that this black woman is stealing her cousin's hair or something like that it's like you're trying to be like my cousin you're trying to be like an Indian person at the same time Lily Singh is actually wearing you know cornrows pretty not cornrows but braids oh you just gotta love the left they're just so there's okay so i wasn't even going to talk about that but i didn't see the captain marvel movie but i i watched the the uh interviews with the with the characters um this was a while ago so anyway i don't know how i got this video started playing and it was uh captain marvel meh and, it, and the video is long as an hour and 51 minutes um, plus. And that was another guy. I think he's he's got a, like a British accent is what I believe could be Australian. I can't remember now. And he has the funniest way of um, doing his videos. <laughs> he's, he, he's got this little cartoon person and the little cartoon person's like uh okay you know like where it's like you can't really explain that oh uh, okay and then he talks to the movie like okay movie <laughs> it's hilarious Mahler I think his name is M-A-U and then capital L-E-R I believe that's he he had me cracking up I was just like listening to him in the background while I was looking over my daughter's like homeschooling slides before I turn them in because she will do the bare minimum if she whatever she can get away with like she's she has to read for 20 minutes every day and every three minutes she's like how many more minutes how many more minutes how many more minutes <laughs> um all right so I didn't see the movie Captain Marvel but I doubt that it could be better than this movie that rips it apart I mean than, than this video that rips it apart this is cracked me up so so much so i was a girl pilot and apparently captain marvel i think is supposed is a character that was written as a man but they turned it into a woman and brie larson um played captain marvel in this uh, captain marvel movie um this guy whoever did this video it's it's captain marvel meh something like that he knows so much about the marvel universe i guess it's called 
he should people like him should be brought in when they're writing the movie because he was like able to just go back and talk about all this. but the point was you had Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow and you had um uh, I think it's oh, I don't know I don't really know all my famous people these actors you know uh Chris Hemsworth I'm not 100% sure played maybe Thor something like this I know Rod um Robert Downey Jr. plays um I think Iron Man something like that so anyway these other characters are very well Don Cheadle's one so these are the people that I saw in the interview with with um Brie Larson now that I saw this video ripping it apart and I saw pieces of the movie itself I want to just say quick it would have it, it's that's a difficult thing for Brie Larson to have to come in to that movie and play that role really well because um this guy they did not develop this character they just took a I think a, ma a historically male character turned it into a woman and then said everybody f and deal with it and then you had these other characters who had been in other movies together building the characters storylines building characters actually building their characters so that you could root for them and then all of a sudden here comes this character that's got like godlike powers was what he said at one point and it's so true it's like she doesn't have to work at anything she just like gets it okay i'm making this video because she, in the move in the movie she supposedly was a, a female pilot and i was cringing so bad through the pilot parts that he put in I just I was like puking in my mouth I have to say so annoying and so disgusting it's okay so as a pilot we always make fun I mean me, my friends and I the pilots and I the guys I, there's not a lot of girl pilots but my my friends and I my friends when we've seen movies where actors act like pilots we laugh our asses off because when actors act like pilots they act like total douchebags the way that they when actors act like pilots they are the pilots if anyone acts like that we tear those people apart i mean we just are merciless like we call him um <laughs> there's one guy at flight safety we, we called maverick and we were just like ranking on him constantly What's up that what what's that math? What's that math? <laughs> you know? Like so when actors act like pilots, they act like complete douches. And I understand that they think, oh, pilots are cool, so I'm gonna act cool. But if you're not truly cool, it comes off as just ridiculous. And that's what this was. There was one okay, so like the engines are super loud. So when I was flying the charter, uh, not the charter, uh, when I was flying the uh, commuter planes for commute air, <laughs> oh, what a terrible job that was. We got paid like nothing. Like our humor came from flying jerks around, like jerks with money came from um, thinking we were going to die. Like, oh my God, you know, like. I remember one time I had three different jobs. One job was flying charter. One job was at a uh, a florist. <laughs> and these women were like, did you get the flowers? Did you get, did you get the funeral arrangement? I'm like, oh my God. And the guy who owned the place, like couldn't stand almost any of his workers except for me. And I used to look <laughs> and I was like, you know, I just flew in icing this morning and now I'm here helping to cut like roses for people to make arrangements out of. And the women are like freaking out more. So we had this, it was in the winter time and it was, we had really bad icing. 
like so bad. And and I was flying this Aerostar, and the the hot plate in the front wasn't working, so it was like my windscreen was iced over. So I had to come in sideways. You're you're on instruments for a long time anyway, and then I used I had to go to the side to make sure I was straight on the runway. It does, it's not as crazy it's a little crazy but I wasn't it wasn't stupid it might sound stupid it wasn't stupid anyone listening to me would know it's like I got icing on the way down and I was I was fine I was safe but I was like I told them no undue delay I didn't have to declare an emergency or anything but I was like no undue delay there's icing on the way down and so I looked through the side and then I kicked it straight and then landed straight and then I got off the runway and I made the someone come out and <laughs> tug me home because I was like, I am not trying to steer and like whack a prop on a, you know, taxi lay light. So it was safe. It was fine. I cleared the runway and then I called, I, 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 my, the, the company that I worked for already knew. I said, this is what I'm going to do. And they're like, okay, we'll have the tug standing by. So I cleared the runway and then we had the ground, you know, it was totally fine. It was totally fine. So we ended up, you know, I'm telling my story to all the guys because I was the only girl charter pilot at the time. And they're telling me their stories and we're laughing and like, <laughs> and then I go to this stupid florist like job that I had after, which paid me more than the, than flying people around, flying douches around and icing. The florist job paid more. Uh, what other job did I have? I was a flight attendant on corporate jets that paid a lot more. Every job I had paid more than my, a lot of my flying jobs until I got to the airlines. In fact, at, at the commuter airline, as a single person with no dependents, we qualified for food stamps. We're flying like, it was a 19 passenger Beechcraft, the 1900 D model. Flying like 19 people at a time, five legs a day, you know, and, and as a single person, we qualify for food stamps. Someone's like, hey, you know, we qualify for food stamps. The company over found out about it and raised our pay 14 cents an hour so that we didn't qualify for food stamps anymore. Oh my God. So anyway, <laughs> this fake female empowerment, I've had, I, I just, it's just hilarious to me. You have to laugh. You have to just laugh at this. So Brie, oh, so. The Beach 1900 was really loud. So we'd have the APU running uh, auxiliary power unit to power all the electricity. And it was so loud and I had to um, count the number of people. And there were certain jobs I had to do. I guess I don't need to take you through that so boring. But then I had to give, you know, a thumbs up to the ground person. And it was so, it was too dorky for me to go. Mm. So I'd go, you know, like, like quick, I'd be like, yep, we got, it. you know, like everything's good. So Brie Larson, the guy keeps showing this one scene where she's in her, she's in her jet and she's in her little outfit. And I don't mean to make fun of her because she's an actor. She has no idea. And I get that. So I want to respect that. I want to have respect for her. But she's, she keeps, I can't even do it. It was like, mm. she does this. Mm. It's so dorky. And the guy in the, the guy in the video trashing it is making fun of how there's no character development, but that's not her fault. Um, I'm not defending her or ha or bashing her, because as far as far from what I could see, it looked like she did the best job she could do given the script she was given and given the situation. You know, they just decided to take a male character, historically male character, turn into a girl, woman, and then like go uh, female you know, fake female empowerment. This fake female empowerment stuff doesn't help anyone. Okay. Um, it really doesn't. I, uh, I want to tell you my son, seventh grade, he was in, uh, he had a, the bus driver wouldn't let the boys on the bus, only the girls, let the girls on first before any of the boys. What ha what, what that ha did was he's a seventh grader and there's eighth grade boys. So he was first in line. She's like, no, get out, get away. So then he got to, he was first behind all the girls. So he was going to get on, but the eighth grade boys just grabbed him and flung him backwards. And then he was last on the bus. And then she'd start driving while he was still looking for a seat. 
so it's like do you want equality or um is it girls first you know because late girls first was back when you guys claim like everything was so horrible for women that was when you know women and children first uh and then i want to tell you another story so i told my friend a story that story and she said listen to this so we're from newtown where the 20 kids were killed um when our sons were in kindergarten so when our kids were in kindergarten they had uh the, that's when the shooting happened on 12 14 12 and so in third grade they started doing this thing i don't know uh, live shooter drills in so there are four elementary schools in my town so her son was at a different school and during a live shooter drill um so these third graders are told you know let's pretend someone is bursting into your classroom to shoot you all and kill you so the kids it's her son tried to go behind the desk and um the teacher's like no no boys in the front girls only girls behind the desk so he came, so my son's friend comes home from school my teacher doesn't care um if i get shot or not and she's like what come on you go, you must have that wrong no sure enough that's what happened the teacher told the boys to get in the front of the desk and only the girls were allowed behind the desk safe from the shooter um so i just want to say to to all this oh there's another couple things i want to mention really fast so the lily sing stuff okay so she's got diverse set of writers whatever all of her jokes seem to be about white men are horrible men in general are horrible if she they kept showing like one time after another all different outfits her outfit kept changing and she kept referring to herself as a bisexual person of color or something like bisexual woman of color bisexual woman of color one af outfit after another after another after another after another so she keeps saying this okay fine um and then all of her jokes are just anti-men and they're like the old they're like she did pantyhose pantyhose jokes she did some really cringe jokes um but she did like the low-lying fruit jokes really like pretty sad actually and um so and then then that got on to uh amy schumer stuff amy schumer has stolen jokes from people we know this um she likes to talk about her vagina and all that stuff fine um but then there was she accused like jerry seinfeld because he i guess he had 10 episodes of comedians in cars or something like this and apparently i didn't watch that at all but i guess 10 episodes they were all white men and amy schumer was complaining that um he picked uh white male comedians and um oh it, that was it was when she was talking to joe rogan and and then there and then so that's that's annoying it's like she she was like saying um he was you know you just it's just like oh my god this this is just a meat suit you know just stop and then there was another comedian lady this is the last one i'm gonna mention i promise and i'm gonna i'm gonna start talking about what i actually want to talk about the last one was another female comedian who wasn't very funny and, and she thought that people weren't laughing at her jokes because she's a female so she dressed up like a guy and she was doing comedy and no one again no one was laughing it was so it's so cringy and and i know these women want to believe that they're just these victims and that oh we're supposed to be this and we're supposed to be that and the men and the men the men oh men all these years men have da -da 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 -da. there's all these stories of how they're victims because they have vaginas uh and or whatever their skin color is all this they're just such victims you know um okay that's fine you know because it is it's always a choice victimhood or empowerment victimhood or empowerment and <laughs> i've always been a tomboy um 
so when I decided to fly planes, oh, and I played sports, you know, and I flew planes and, you know, stuff like that. And I'm not saying that I had it easy. I did not. I really, I had to work harder because I was a girl. I got tested much worse, but that's just the way it was. And I met a lot of female pilots and I got to tell some stories. I've told stories with other female pilots and the, the cool ones are just like so much fun and so cool. And we have really funny stories, but the ones that act like they're victims, you know, we all put up with the same crap. I had people, I used to be very cute. <laughs> So I would get taken for a flight attendant and I'd have people hit on me with the weirdest kind of cringe. Like, <sighs> that if I told like any of these women who think that they're proponents of women about women's empowerment, the fake, if I told women who are about the fake women's empowerment, they would get mad, but there's nothing to get mad at. Like. I'm through. I'm fine. I got these awesome dogs and kids and kids and dogs and, you know, husband and, you know, like, look, it's like, if you're going to get wrapped up in all this crap, you're just not fun. If you're not fun, you're not fun. And you can't whine. If, if you're a girl comedian and you're not, you're just not funny. You're just not funny. That's okay stop being a comedian or or be funny at not being funny or something do something like i don't get to be a model you know i'm not six feet tall i weigh 110 pounds i don't get to be a brain surgeon you know what i mean like we don't all get to just be whatever we want just because we want it they people with this diversity they think they're being diversity mindset they're really missing a lot like when simon cowell tells people you don't have what it takes to be America's this or Britain's that talent winner for that. There's some love in that where it's like, let me tell you what the people before me should have told you. Enjoy singing, but don't try and win a contest and don't sing four songs after I say stop. You don't have it. We know whether you got it or not. That's our job. Not everybody gets to be whatever they want to be. You know, so some women are six feet tall and weigh 110 pounds or whatever. I've met professional models, a couple of them actually. And I really like them. They're just doing what they can do. And it's, it looks easy, but they have stories too. And I don't want to, I would not want to have to like, only eat like a little tiny bit of pasta when I really want to take down a whole bowl like and flying is not for everybody and I don't want more women in aviation it's scary <laughs> sometimes you think you're gonna die I thought I was gonna die a few times it's not everybody gets to do whatever they want all right I want to talk about men's empowerment for a second because this fake women's empowerment this fake women's empowerment assumes that men have, are the problem for women not being empowered. And what the women who died a hundred years ago get irritated because they're like, don't use me as a victim. I wasn't a victim. I didn't want to vote. I had to clean off. I had to wash dirty diapers. I had to do this. I had to do this. I had to, you know, I'm going to do a different video on voting because people don't understand what voting is all about. But voting was a civic duty and these these women are like we didn't want to have to go like we didn't want to have we had enough chores <sighs> we had enough chores to do voting was a chore it was nothing more than a chore to sit there and listen to how they want to spend your money and how they want to do this and then you had to vote it's like we would have voted the same as our husbands i wish people would stop using us as victims we weren't victims and a lot of these women are like I loved my husband. We worked our asses off. We had to work so hard. We did not have washers and dryers, dishwashers, clothes washers, laundry, da da da. We didn't have all that. 
You know, we didn't, we didn't have computers. We didn't have whiteout. We didn't even have telephones. We had to work so hard just to stay alive. And one woman who was, that died, but she lived, she was on the wagon train. She goes, let me tell you something. 0, 0.00 bar percent of women said, no, honey, you hold the baby. I'll go fight the Indians. She, so she knows I say 0, 0.00 bar, stuff like that. She likes that. So she's got a sense of humor too. She's like, look, none of us said, no, you hold the baby. I'll go fight the Indians. When our husbands were like, stay here, I'll go, you know, <laughs> and she's like, you know, no one spoke each other's language. Everybody fought everybody. It was awful. It was an insane time. It was scary. It was so scary. No one talked to each other. They looked different. We looked different. Everybody was scared of each other and no one could communicate with each other. So there was a lot of killing, a lot of killing on both sides. And because there was like, you guys are here, <laughs> you guys are still alive. Like it just goes, it just goes, it just goes. You know, you come in and then you die and then another generation comes in and then your soul gets recycled. You can choose a different meat suit. Oh, I, I want to be a girl this time. I want to be a boy this time. I want to be black this time. I want to be, you know, I want to live in China this time. Okay. Like this. Uh, it People take things so personally. And, um, you know, I made a video before I got some thumbs down. It's like, People who were like, well, all right, I'm not going to redo that. Fuck that. All right, here's the thing. I have a big gay male relative. And he had the hardest time with me not wearing makeup. It's like, why wouldn't you wear makeup? Oh my God, if I could wear makeup. This is a long time ago. And, and he could wear makeup now. It's 2020. He could, he could wear makeup, right? He could wear makeup. And he could have then, too. Like 20 years ago. He could have. He could have worn makeup 20 years ago. But if he chose to wear makeup 20 years ago, his life would have been different than other choices that he made. So he could dress up in drag. And that's one thing. That's, a whole, that's its own whole culture. That's its own whole thing. But he meant... Carla, why don't you wear makeup on a regular basis? It just makes you look so pretty. He was so frustrated. So I just want to say this fake women's empowerment that act like, oh, men are to blame for all of our problems. I was, a, I was able to become a professional female airline pilot. And that made people so happy and thankful to me and I remember father looking at me he had a little daughter you know? this guy with little daughters looking at me like oh you know he didn't say it out loud he's like thank you kind of you know for breaking making a path for my daughter or whatever so as a girl airline pilot I got like accolades but at the same time I was doing that men who became nurses got crap you know men who did girl jobs got crap for it and women who did men jobs remember um what should we call it um i didn't see flash dance either so i'm telling really good stories about stuff that i don't know anything about right now but like flash dance think about flash dance she was a welder right that was cool you know a girl welder was cool and even like 10 20 years after that male nurses not cool so you there, some people say it's a deliberate flip where it's clown world. Okay. So where it's, everything's backwards. I just want to point out right now, the ridiculousness of saying poor women F men. Okay. Because women have been allowed to, I was I was a tomboy. That's a thing. It was totally normal. I played soccer. I climbed trees. I loved sports. I played with trucks, cars, um, all that. And then when I became a professional female airline pilot, people were like, go you, right? It was, it was not easy, but I, I actually climbed the hill. I actually did it. I became actually empowered, truly empowered. And not all men wanted me to be there. That's just the way it is. 
but the men who there were so many men on my side there were so many old men old white men that sort of fell in love with me art greenberg from flight safety i had the guy the the um i had the this guy harry who was a real douche at flight safety was really douchey really bad i went to the chief pilot uh at flight safety told him my story and shit happened to harry okay and then harry was staring at me from the counter and i weighed 90 pounds soaking wet i was so tiny i looked like a flight attendant lost in the flight department so harry got <laughs> stuck handing out uh airplanes to people to to to, to take up like you had to go to the, the flight line it was called the flight line and and you'd go there and you'd um, pick up your plane and whatever. So Harry got stuck on the flight line. Really a big deal because he was the engines instructor. He was such a douchebag. He was such a douche. And he's sitting there behind the freaking desk handing out airplanes. And he's looking at me like this. And I just, I was like, I don't know, I was like 20 feet away. And he thought he was scaring me. He was a big man. And I looked at him and I was 20 feet away easily. I was tiny and I had really, I was blonde, you know, little, little girl. <laughs> and I go, what, what Harry, what? Like that, I just fucking shut him right down. I put him in his fucking place. And then this guy, Bill Clawson was like top, top dog. He was like, he was the funniest. He was like a great pilot. He used to just hack at everybody. Um, he was like, you know, he was like uh, number one person. And he trashed everybody, right? He trashed everybody. And, and so people, if, if he got, if he was getting your eye, people would like look away. They were afraid of him. He was like, um, you know, the alpha male. And uh, <laughs> he, he started hacking at me one day. I was standing up. I was in the middle of like the lobby. And he starts going off on me <laughs> and I'm looking at him and I have no idea what I'm going to say. And I know I'm not going to run, you know, part of me is like, okay, good. He's, he's, it's my turn. It's just my turn. It's just my turn to get hacked at by Bill. <laughs> and he's just like, I don't know what he was even saying. And I'm like petrified in my mind and I have my face. I'm just looking at him like, and in my mind, I'm like, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Oh my God. Oh my God. And, and I'm getting red, you know, like you do. And I'm starting to sweat <laughs> and I have nothing. There's nothing to say. He was attractive, very attractive. He's the best pilot. Everybody knew he was just smart and funny. He was like perfect. He was like flying God, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I just look at him. He finally stops talking. And I'm like, I got nothing to say, so I'm like, so? And he goes, what? Because <laughs> people, people always, I watch time after time after time, these guys would try and get back at him, try and hack at him back. You just couldn't beat him. And he, and that was his chair. And he sat there all the time. And if he, if he came up, he'd go, that's my chair. And, you, and you'd get out, you know? Well, I wouldn't, but everybody else, all the boys would. And so he's like finally finished what did you say and I go so like that and he died laughing he just died laughing and from that point on he and I were very good friends he ended up becoming my instructor he was the best he made he made the rest of my time at flight safety the best and I I cried in front of him because I had this other instructor who was like sucking me dry money. I was, that's why I lived in my car. That's how I lived in my car. Cause I had this flight instructor that sucked and she, she just was awful. And, um, so Bill said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go in, we're going to tell him this, 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 and, and we're going to get you surf, you know, with all your ratings and you're not gonna have to pay another dime. And I was like, how are we going to do that? And he did it. So he was my, uh, he, he ended up becoming like the best, 
person to me at Flight Safety. I want to end this video right now, but I just want to say, if you think that women have always had it bad and men have always had it good, you have not been paying attention because life used to be very hard and men and women used to work together. They had to work together. And that was the way that we got here. That's how we got the easiest lives that we have right now in Western civilization. I want to point out that um, men, if you look at what, what jobs were typically women was the home and what jobs were typically men was working outside the home. The Spanish grandmother said, you know, I told my husband what I, what I needed. And I told my husband, we need a bigger house. It was up to him to give me a bigger house. I told him I need more money. It was up to him to give me more money. It was, I told him when I needed this, she's like, I ran the show. I told him what we needed and I ran the show. Okay. I channeled her in another video. I think I called it Abuela. And I did not do her justice. I wouldn't say, I was too afraid to say a lot of the stuff that she was telling me. I was scared. Uh, I'm not so scared anymore. Um, people need, people are waking up now. The thing is, men and women need to work together. Now, the leftists, I'm just leaving them out. Okay, I'm just leaving them out from now on. They just, they're just fighting amongst themselves at this point. They're just, we used to call it stepping on their own dicks. They're just stepping on their own dicks. They're fighting amongst themselves they're out victiming themselves you know i'm i'm a bigger victim no i'm a bigger victim no i'm a bigger victim so just let the leftists just have their victimhood just let them have it everybody else needs to just sort of wake up right now and work together okay we've gotten where we are because we work together the um inventions that we've had that we've seen over the last couple hundred years have really served women in typical women's jobs. Dishwashers, uh, clothes washers, you know, yes, it's helped men, but why do you think there's been so many strides in, um, in the lives of typical old school type 50s type women? Um, you could say men were listening and men and women worked together to make women's lives easier because people started to realize that the job in the home, keeping a home was harder than um, maybe working outside the home. So as things got easier in Western civilization, uh, we got vacuum cleaners, we got um, dishwashers, all this kind of stuff. It's all very cool if you're, if you really open your eyes and if you, you know, if you just enjoy whatever meat suit that your soul picked out, whatever meat suit your soul picked out, enjoy it. Whatever, whatever you're, um, if you're gay, enjoy that. You know, if you're straight, enjoy that. If you're white, enjoy that. If you're black, enjoy that. If you're Chinese, enjoy that, all this stuff. Just enjoy whatever you've gotten. Thank you. Gratitude to your to your soul, your higher self to, to, for picking out this meat suit. I am I'm more lucky than the regular person. I remember being a Chinese man in a past life. I remember being a uh, Nazi uh, in a past life. I remember being a female doctor in Greece uh, in a past life. I remember being um, some sort of Asian monk in another life. I remember being in a, I remember being a white male in a war also. All right. And I remember being a white male in prison, died in prison after killing somebody. So, okay. The, the five agreements, be impeccable with your word because your word creates whatever, wherever your mind goes, energy follows, blood, then matter. So you're creating, whether you want to or not. If you you could create shit for yourself by complaining about shit. People who bitch about racism, they see racism everywhere. People who bitch about sexism, they see it everywhere. Does it exist? Of course it does. Does it exist in all the places that the leftists say? No, it does not. It just doesn't. Um, you can make up imaginary people to fight and hate, then that's just fine. That's what you're gonna do. I have relatives that do it. They want me to hate racists. I just say, I don't know any. I'm not friends with any. I don't know any. I'm sure that there are some, but I'm, I'm just going to love them from here. I'm just not going to give them any energy. 
that's just how I'm going to play it. You can get mad at me if you want to, because I bless you. I forgive, uh, I forgive you and your anger towards me and these imaginary racist people that I don't know that you want me to hate. I'm not going to do that. But I still bless you wanting me to hate Donald Trump, all these people, all those people, this person, that person, this movie, that movie. Blah, blah, blah. I know I'm supposed to hate all those things. And I bless you for wanting me to hate it. And I forgive you for wanting me to hate it. And I respect your free will choice to hate me for not hating. And I love you from here. Right? But it's funny. It's just fucking funny. This is all bullshit. <laughs> Back to the five agreements. Be impeccable with your word because your, create, your word creates in the universe. Okay? Don't take anything personally. All the crap that I got served, whether it was at flight school, whether it was in the airline jobs and all this crap. Oh my God. Fuck it. Fuck it. I could have, I had the best job in the world. I had the best job flying all over the world in a 767, a heavy jet, international. I flew all over the world. I ate hot fudge sundaes in first class when it was my rest time. If I focused on the crap that I was getting from some of the dinosaurs, I would have ruined my life. It was too awesome. I focused on what was awesome, and then I create. And then when I lost that job on 3303 because of furlough because of the 9-11 fallout, I created another version of awesome. I created another awesome life with more awesome people. And the, the higher I keep my vibration, the more the universe or God, highest, holiest, source creator, energy, prime creator, whatever you call it, the law of attraction gives me what I'm putting out. It gives it back. So if I'm at an awesome vibration, enjoying the crap out of everything, the law of attraction gives me that back. I'm going to do a video about a client when she gets, she's almost there and she's almost there. And I'll tell you, she went from total shit show and she's headed towards incredible. Oh my God. Her life's probably going to be better than mine. And it was just because she listened to me when I told her, keep your heart compass set to love. Keep your heart compass set to love, bless, forgive, respect for your choice and love. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't take anything personally. If it wasn't these people messing with you, it'd be a different group of people with different faces. The soul is attached to the lesson, not the classroom. Period. End of story. That's it. Don't take it personally. Your soul is making these people screw with you so that you could learn something. Learn the lesson pass the class, leave the classroom. Okay. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. I see these people making assumptions all over the place. These people who think that they know, oh, why someone puts on a MAGA hat or why somebody follows QAnon or why somebody votes for Donald Trump or why somebody votes for Hillary Clinton or why somebody votes for this or why somebody votes for that. You're probably wrong because you're making assumptions. The news is full of people telling you why someone else did something else. If you want to know why somebody did something, you have to ask the person who made that choice, or you're probably going to be making an assumption that's probably going to bring you pain. Why would anyone manipulate your reality? Because they make money off of you. They make ass loads of money off of you and your incorrect beliefs that they've programmed in. They put you in the perfect vibration between fear and anger and kept you there. Kept you in fear and anger and turned you into a consumer. You're buying all this crap. You're buying all this crap. You're buying all this crap to make your life better because something's wrong with you. You're too fat. You're too ugly. You're too old. You're too this. You're too that. You need our help to be better. Be better. Be better, Karen. Be better. Okay? So, you make assumptions. You're just screwing with yourself. I don't care, okay? Because you're not in my reality. You're entitled to your own reality, which I bless, forgive, I respect your free will choice, and I love you anyway from here. But I have my own reality. I'm not available for your reality. All right. Uh, always do your best. Always do your best. When you're always doing your best, you need to actually stay in a vibration where you're connected and listening to your spirit. Spirit-directed life. 
And the fifth agreement, be skeptical, but learn to listen. And that's the magic right there. That's just the magic. The magic is be skeptical, but learn to listen. When you listen to, to people telling you why they do whatever they're doing, why they think whatever they think, there's always a reason. Why do people watch CNN? There's a reason. There's a great reason why people continue to tune in to, to people who've been proven false. Look at Rachel Maddow. She still has viewers, I think. I don't know if she's still on the air. She's been wrong so many times. But why do people still listen? There's a reason. Do you really care why anyone? Then don't ask that question. Don't ask why if you don't want to know. Ask, how can I be happier? How can I raise my vibration? How can I create a better life for myself? When you focus your energy and your mind on what you want to create instead of what you don't want to create, don't ask, don't waste your time asking questions of why those idiots did that stupid thing. Don't ask that because you don't want to know. You don't want to find out and the, and the universe is required to bring you that answer. Your intuitive heart is required. Ask, how can I make more money if you want more money? How can I be healthy if you want to be healthy? How can I, I've, I've asked so many questions. How can I help my baby without putting it on medication. How can I help my child right now? How can I pass, how can I pass the, uh, was another one. I failed the, uh, blood, uh, the, the glucose tolerance test as a pregnant woman. How can I pass it naturally? Uh, how can I, this, how can I, that ask questions to your heart that you want to know the answers to this is far too long, but, um, I am going to be talking about men's empowerment. People's empowerment, men's empowerment. If you're a victim of men, um, that's fine. Oh, that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. And if you are enjoying fake female empowerment, then that's fine too. I bless that. Forgive it. Respect your free will choice. Love you from over here. But <sighs> there's something to actually suffering that makes you actually cool. And I think most people, if you haven't seen the movie, The Matrix, watch The Matrix. Look at Trinity from The Matrix. She was a truly empowered female. She was treated like a member of the team. And when I work towards a real female empowerment, it's not female empowerment. It's human empowerment. It's personal empowerment. And your choice is that between victimhood or empowerment. Every day, every moment of your life, choose between empowerment or victimhood. That's your choice. Whatever you want to do with that's fine. And if you are, if you're a conservative or a typical old school liberal, so like typical old school liberals are open-minded. Um, they want people, they, they, both typical old school liberals and conservative people, they want liberty for the individual. They want, uh, they both want and, and fight for equality of opportunity. Okay. They do it different ways. They think of it differently. Uh, but the old school liberal open-minded person and the conservative type both groups are, um, their, their priority and what they would fight for is personal, individual liberty and freedom. Okay. So, um, that's not what a leftist is. So let the leftists be leftists. Don't fight them. Let them just fight. You don't need to fight them trust them that they're doing whatever they're supposed to be doing to learn whatever they're supposed to learn or not learn. If they go, they go, you know, they have the, typically they have the lowest vibrations of like, you know, guilt. Like, so like a, a white male leftist would be guilty because he's a man and because he has white skin. That's a low, that's a 30 level vibration. Let him have it. Let him have it. That's what he's choosing. Um, 
but the real old school liberals and the conservatives all fighting and focusing on fighting for individual liberty and freedom. Focus on that. Just focus on individual or your own personal freedom, liberty, individual liberty, freedom, all that. Just focus on that. Don't fight anyone. Don't fight anyone. You're wasting your time and energy. You don't have time for that right now. That part's over. That's the old paradigm. All right, that's the old paradigm. The more of us shifting our individual vibrations to the higher levels, love, 500, joy, 540, peace, 600, freedom, 700 and up, you know, gratitude, 900 and up, gratitude. What can you be grateful for? Shift your own individual vibration. The law of attraction will have to bring you other people with high vibrations. It doesn't matter if you're liberal or conservative. If you have a high vibration, you're going to get along with, you know, someone who's on the other side. They're not on the other side. If they'll have a matching vibration and you will be able to share and not mock each other, but sort of like poke fun at each other. I'm, I'm good friends with, um, people who are politically, politically, probably op oppositional, but they all have high vibrations. You know who you are because you all watch my videos. I love you guys. This is far too long. I love you. Okay. Thanks. See ya.